Okay. Yeah. So we left off with um, Khan and Nebody sitting down and the owner of the restaurant going inside to make him some food. Um, do you recognize this kanji? Uh, nigeru. Hi, nigeru, to run. Perfect. Can you read the sentence for me? Nebori wa mukai ni suwatta. What does that mean? Nebori, he uh, turned. Nikai ni. Um, sit down. Yes. Sit down. Uh, but mukai ni, why is the ni particle here? Hi, because um, we're modifying the how he's sitting. He's sitting in a mukai kind of way. He, oh, he he's slouching. He sits slouchingly. That's a good guess because I think you're thinking right. about maru meru. Mukai, you were kind of right earlier, but also kind of wrong at the same time. But your first kind of guess of what mukau kind of means is to turn normally or to face specifically, to face. Um, But when you say mukai ni suwata, basically it means to sit facing in the mukai direction. Um. So in this case, we would almost kind of assume that the person saying the sentence is sitting across from Nebody. So Nebody sits facing me, in other words, uh, that the the what they're facing towards is um, me, in other words. You can think of this as to sit across. Sit um, across. Can you read this for me? Okay. Uh, what does this the thief run. Perfect. Um, so volational form. Volational form basically is the form that shows when you're saying you're going to do something. You're kind of like you're committed to doing this action. A lot of times it's translated as let's do it, but it's not actually necessarily inviting someone to do it. You can say this to yourself. This kind of means I'm going to do this action. I've decided it basically. Um, with do verbs, all you do is delete the final do and add yo. So tateru turns into tateyo. So how does nigeru turn into volitional form? Nigeru. Nigero. Hi, nigeyo, nigeyo. 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 Wait. Yeah, nigeyo. Okay. Da, 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 da. Um, our next word is tsukamaru. This is to capture. And this one right here tsukamaru. is not a do verb. It is an u verb. Tsukamaru. R plus u. So, to try. So, if you see um, o to, a lot of times you'll see sudo with it. O to. This means you attempted to do the verb, but you didn't necessarily finish doing the verb. So it's either it could be part way through the action, almost all the way done, or before you even started, you might have just went, I'm going to talk. And right before you actually open your mouth, the action gets interrupted. So it means to attempt to do the verb, and most likely something causes it not to happen. In some occasions, um, in context, you can kind of tell if the action occurred or not occurred. But I would say about 80% of the times this is a the verb failed. Uh, for example, can you read this first sentence for me? Doka o nu, ah, doka o utasuru to tsukamaru. Hi, doka o nusumo to suru to tsukamaru. So this says, um, I was about to steal some copper coins. However, right when I tried to do that, I was captured. Tsukamaru. Well, specifically, this is will be captured. I probably should have had that in past tense. Um, I, I was captured better. Um, can you read the sentence over here? Majutsu shi wa yubi o tatte yo utoshita ga. Hi. Majutsu shi wa yubi o tatte yo utoshita ga. This means I, I attempted to... Um, Put up my fingers, but dot 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 something got in the way. Who knows? So how would you say to attempt to run away in Japanese? So in order to use this grammar point, Hi. the verb need to be in the 
yo form. Yes, the volational form. In the volational form. Yo. So, nige yo utoshitaga. I attempt to run away. Right. So, um, something that I've noticed you have a little bit issue is with long vowels. Long vowels. So, this right here is not mo u. You don't really, you don't need to put a pause in between these two sounds. This is one long sound. This is mo. This right here. This is not yo u. This is yo. So, this right here is not nige yo u. It's nige yo toshitaga. It's just a long o sound. So if you see u after any kind of o sound, it's just making it long. It's not actually two separate sounds that need a little break between them. Nige yo toshitaga. So uh, I had attempted to run away, but this is what you wrote. Um, do you know what keshite shimao means? Keshite shimao. It's um disappear in a negative sense. Yes, to make something disappear in a negative sense. Do you know a way we can slur te and she together to make one hiragana character? He chao. Yes. He chao mao. Yep, it can turn into chi. So you can say kesh chi mao, or you could also slur these two together to make chao. Both of those work. Yep. Chi mao. Right. Uh, next, temo. Specifically, this is adding mo to te, te form. This right here basically makes even if. Um, the fail isn't a part of this. I was left over from the last page. Um, could you read this first sentence for me? Nusunde mo atata. I'm sorry. Nusunde mo anata no koto ga suki. Hi. So that says. Even if you stole something, I would still love you, right? So even if this action occurs, this will still exist. How about this one? What does this say? Sukamatte mo itsuka nigeru. Hi. So this is even if I was captured one day, I would es I will escape. So you can also use it like a future tense. Um, this could also be if you were captured one day, you will escape. The subject is not specified in this specific sentence. So how would you say, I... even if you run away, it's okay. So it's okay would be E. Nigette mo da yo. Hi. E desu. Yep. You could definitely say da yo here. Even if you, even if you run, it's okay, you know. Perfect. Do you know what sugu means? Sugu, quickly. Perfect. So let's go read our sentence from the book. Koko kara dato nige yo to shite mo makai ni tsuwatta neburi ni suku tsukamatcha chimao. Hai. First off, how do you read this word? Mukai. Perfect, mukai. So this koko kara dato, it basically just means if we're in this location. It's kind of like a way to start that. Koko kara dato. So if I'm from here, then the rest of this should be true. Koko kara dato, nige yo to shite mo. Um, even if I try to run, Mukai ni suwatta neburi ni. Neburi is sitting right across from me. Yes. What would he do? He would then sugu sukamachao. He would quickly capture me. Yes. And I'd be sad about that. Perfect. And the knee mark the uh, uh, doer yes, of the action. Of Yes, uh, Tsukamaru is to be captured, not to capture. I'm sorry about that. If I did the Tsukamaru. Tsukamaru. Hi. Um, do you know how this word ends? It means hat. Hat. Boshi. Hi, boshi. Perfect. Do you know what um, nugu means? Nugu. To 
take off one's clothing. Yes, to take off one's clothing. Perfect. So now you have to remember nugu to strip. Yeah. Um, satte is that kind of like easy. So all you have uh, to do is remember the word nude. Yep, nude. <laughs> <laughs> nugu. So satte is basically just a way to kind of like start a new like sentence. It's a lot like well in English. A lot of, a lot of words in Japanese are a lot like well like ma and ja now satte. Uh, sate is a little bit more uh, an aggressive well, I guess. So like ma feels like a very like laid back well. But it's just like it's kind of so I guess sate is a bit more like okay, let's start versus ma, which is more I guess well, I guess blah blah blah. But it's basically it's just a way to start a sentence to basically be like okay, let's be on topic. So how would I say I strip off my hat in Japanese? Boshi o nugu. Perfect. To take off a hat. Um. Do you know what this word is? Starts with ko. Kozo. Hi, kozo. Perfect. Do you know what the mas form of nugu is? Mas form. Nugi mas. Hi, nugi mas. Perfect. What does this sentence say? Kozo to itta. Um. The uh, kozo quote said. Yes, the say kozo said quote boy brat. <laughs> um, yes. what's this word right here? Boshi. Hi, perfect. Oh, no, no, you're no, you're right. It it's the bowl part of boshi. <laughs> okay, let's go read this sentence. Satte kozo neburi wa. Neburi, while taking off his hat, said, All right, kid. Perfect. Do you know this word? Akarui? Yep, it's akarui. Right, akarui. Do you know what basho means? A place. Perfect. A place. Can you read this sentence for me? Akarui basho de kao o mita. Hi. What does this mean? The a a brightly a bright place at a bright place. I saw. The face. Hi. Kao. So a lot of times when you learn midu, we say it means to see, but the better definition of it is to look at. I'm, I'm oh, just pointing okay, this okay. out because, like, I feel like um, it's out. It's what makes it kind of confusing the difference between midu and mieru, because mieru is like to be able to see. It's like, oh, I happen to see this, but mita is more like you're looking at something, kind of kao midu. So I look at the face rather than say being like I see a face. You probably would say kao ga miedu if you were kind of trying to express that. And that's kind of just, I don't really know why miedu tends to be taught to mean to see. Because I, I, I definitely know I tend to say that. But it's more like to look at as um, a closer meaning. Hi. Yeah. Look, look at a face at. in the location of a bright place. I, see, I look at a face. Um, do you recognize this kanji? Kanji kami. Yep, kami, hair. Perfect. Do you know what a Mayu is? I bet you don't, but I thought I'd check. Mayu, it's from Final Fantasy VII. Oh, like a His Namai. eyebrows. Yes, eyebrows. <laughs> Mayu. <laughs> the the little pixel for um. Plow. Oh. He had he had no eyebrows. <laughs> oh my. He had no eyebrows. That's how I remember the word. Makes sense. <laughs> Let's go read the sentence. Um, kami to mayu to me wa kuroi. So the hair, the eyebrows, and the eye are black. Perfect. And this right here starts with ba. Do you know what it ends with? Ba sho. Hi, sho. Our next word is 
shira ga majiri, which means basically hair that isn't fully white, but also isn't the natural color. It has, you know, a lot of gray strands in it. So that's why its hair has white mixed inside of it. Shira ga majiri. Shira ga majiri. So ma majiri is to be mixed. The ga is from kami and shira is one of the ways um, white can be read. Um, can you read the sentence for me? Yes. Hirai ba shou de kami ga mienai. Hi, did you say irai right here? Kirai. Uh, Ki. I see, I see. So it's not kirai, it's ku, kurai. Kurai. Hi. Kurai. Kurai. Kurai ba de ga nai means at a dark, at a um, just gloomy place. <laughs> I'm not able to see hair. Perfect. I cannot see the hair in the dark place. Um, can you read this sentence for me? Kami to mayu wa. Shira ga majirita. What does that mean? Hair and eyebrows are of the um, pepper color, white and exactly. black. Perfect. Mixed together. The official definition of this word is like grizzled, apparently, which I did grizzled. not know that's what grizzled meant, but then I Googled it and I was like, that's what that word means? I always thought mm. that meant like, your hair was like really bad, like you slept, you didn't brush your hair in the morning. <laughs> but no. Yeah, it's all curly and pointy oh, oh. in different directions. Apparently but it's not. actually mean um um the pepper having, hair. Having gray in it, having yeah. white in, in it. Yeah, I was like, what? Um hmm. anyway, what's this word right here? Ba. Hi. The ba from Basho. Means place. Do you know what an agohige is? I feel like we touched on this back in like the first chapter. Agohige. Hi. Agohige. Hige is like facial hair. Yes, yeah, specifically it's whiskers. Whisker. Agohige. Okay, so there, it's facial hair on the ago location of the face. Where do you think mm. that's going to be? Hmm. Oh, the chin is the ago. Hi, the chin is the ago. Ago, so ago he get is a beard, specifically of the beard. go, most likely the goatee area, rather than like a full Santa beard. But theoretically, it can be used for like a beard in general. But it tends to insinuate the goatee kind of beard. Um, can you read the right. sentence for me? Kurai, basho ni nigeta. What does that mean? Run to the dark place. Yes, I, I escaped into the dark place. Into the dark place. Hi. So let's go read our line from the book. Akarui basho de miruto me wa kuroi kuro kami to agohige to mayu wa Shiraga machirida. Hi. So to, as you know by now, tends to signify a cause and effect relationship. This is really commonly used with me to basically exp explain what someone saw. Because if you didn't look, then you wouldn't have seen this. But once you look, you didn't gain this information. So when you look in this location, this allows you to see this information. And this information mm -hmm. is describing the magician, Nebari, who's sitting right across from Khan. So, now translate this. So, um, at the at the bright place, I I look and saw. Um, the eye was dark, the eye was the eye is black, the hair, and the goatee, along with the eyebrows, are grizzle. Perfect. Hi. Do you know this kanji? The kanji iro. 
I eat all color. Perfect. What's the ta form of nugu? To strip. The ta form of nugu is nugunda. That's a good no. guess. Uh, wait, it is that. Nunda. It, it just, we had the gu in there. <laughs> gu needs to be dropped. Nunda. So, nunda. Nui. Uh, is it nuida? Nuida. Nuida. So, ku, maybe I'm wrong. Ku, ku me, so, it's, 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 <laughs> when you hear something wrong, you're like, yeah, e da. Because ku makes, um, ita. And then gu, Hi. when you add that ten ten, all it does is add the ten ten to the back. So nugu is nuida, nuida, nuida. Hi hi hi, nuida, nuida. Um, do you happen to know this? This is a color. A color. Hi. Yes, we had this kanji before. We Ash did, color. but not with this reading. Oh, this right here oh. is height. From hairo, which is gray. Hairo. Hai. So hairo. So it's a long e right here. Hairo. 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 Perfect. I completely forgot the other reading from mm. the time several lessons ago. We had this two kanji together, but it was a different reading. Um. So it wasn't this guy on its own. So we had sumi, which was charcoal, and I didn't make you learn that. Uh, which um, is related to that. And we also learned dando, which doesn't have any familiar. And we learned he. He we did learn, which is fire. But um, we didn't actually hi. learn um, the gray part hi. of this. But they're, they're um, okay. related to each other. They look similar. So the other one was sumi. This one hi. is hi. Hi. Can you read the sentence for me? Hai iro no kuchi. Oh, nugu. Hi. Theoretically, this could definitely be that. There's nothing in here saying oh, it can't sorry. be that. This just happens to be um just katakana. Uh, these do look identical to those two kanji you mentioned. If this was horizontal, it would have been more obvious because um ichi would be like this in a horizontal position, but it's like this in um I mean the long sounds so the the long sounds like that. Uh, which would make it more obvious that it's that that's not a kanji character because you wouldn't have a kanji character with a line like that. But that was a really good guess because there's definitely <laughs> words that look like this. Um, so wrong. Yeah, yeah, this Robu. Is, no, right. <laughs> so what I does this say? No robo nugu. Pick off the um the gray rope. Perfect. Take off the gray lobe. Our next word is koi. Um, koi means um deep, but they don't mean like going deep down swimming or something like that. They mean like deep color or rich color. Koi. You can also use this koi. like with flavoring of things, like a very rich deep. Um. So let's koi. go read our line from the text. Neburi wa koi hairo no ropu mo. Nuguida. Nuguida? Nuida, hi. Nuida. Okay. It said, Neburi also take off his um, dark gray robe. Hi. Dark gray robe. As well. Yes. Yeah. Um, he also so it says Neveri also took off his gray robe. Um, how's this red? Nige yo to perfect. And this guy? Basho. Perfect. And our last one on this page. Boshi o. Right. Boshi. So this right here, kuta bireru, basically means to be um worn down, like old clothing, for example. Kuta bireru. Hi. Can you read the sentence for me? Boshi wa kuta bireru. What does that mean? I mean the hat is worn out. Exactly. It's worn out hat. Yep. Perfect. 
Do you remember how this is red? Put on. Kita. So it's just a short key. Robo kita. Robo kita. Hi. Our next word is shishu. I'm oh, sorry, shishu. Shishu is um embroidery. Embroidery. Shishu. Um, embroidery. Doremo basically means all or nothing, depending on um the ending of the uh, sentence. So right here, this would be all. Can you read the sentence for me? Doremo piro do da. Hi, piro do is velvet. Velvet. So what does this say? They were all velvet. Yes, they were all velvet. Perfect. Okay. Well, oh, that's weird. Interesting. Uh, I deleted the slide. Anyway, these are here are parts of the body. So this is a bull sheep. That's the hat. Eddie is the collar thing, like right here. And also here. These are both Eddie's. Uh, furoku, sorry, furoku koto is this thing right here. This is the frogu koto, like the coat that he's wearing over. Besuto is the vest. And zubon are the pants. Um, so now you get to read the text over here, starting over there. Sono shita ni wa kuro no zubon to Birodo no erino suita furokuro to shitsu tsuki no kuro no betsu to o kite ita dore mo cho Hey. So first off, what is zubon? Zubon referring to the pants. Yeah. What do we know about the pants? The pants are black. That is correct. The pants and are black. And it's below. It's in the. Yes. So this sono shita. The, the sono. Yes. The robe. Perfect. So below the robe, he had black pants. Let's see. Our next thing is a frog coat. What do we know about the frog? The fr the frog coat. Frog coat. Shitsu embroider suki. Ah uh, no. So to means and in here. So this uh, means this right here sure. frog coat is its own thing. This thing right here is a verb tuita. So we know that this right here must be modifying the frog coat. So what we know about the frog coat is that biro no eri no tuita. You know what tsuku means? Tsuku. Tsuku. To attach. Yes, to attach. So attached to the frog coat is what? Eri? Yes. Eri. Eri is the collar. So we're referring to this area of the frog coat. What do we know about this eri? Um, shishu suki no. That's not nothing to do the with what we're talking about right now. Oh, I'm sorry, we're still on. We're on Eddie. It's birodo. It's completely velvet. Yes. Oh, so no, no, no. It's just velvet. Yes. The collar of the frog quote is velvet. Nice. Next thing right here is besto. What's a besto? The vest referring to the the actual coat, uh, it's, the outer it, garment, it's not the inner garment. Doing this inner garment thing. This is called a vest. Okay. Vest. Um. So, what do we know about the vest? I uh, see. Um, the vest is black. Yes. And then and what else? Embroider. We... Yes. It has embroidery on it. Yes, exactly. That tsuki comes from tuku, which is attached. 
So altogether, it says he is wearing a vest that is black with embroidery on it. Also, he's wearing a flog coat that has a collar attached to it made out of velvet. And he's wearing black pants. And these are all below his coat. And what is our next thing? Doremo kutabireru. Doremo. All of them. Yes. Chotto, a little bit worn out. Exactly. All of his clothes is a little bit worn out. Perfect. And now we're at our halfway point. So I'll stop sharing and I'll see you in two seconds. 